The North American X-15 stands as a towering achievement in the chronicles of aerospace innovation, embodying the relentless quest for speed and the daring spirit of exploration that would take it to the edge of space. Emerging in the late 1950s as Cold War tensions drove the United States' thirst for technology, this sleek, rocket-powered pioneer set new benchmarks in aviation, reaching dizzying altitudes of over 350,000 feet and speeds of Mach 6.7, a record that has not been broken to this day. But this extraordinary aircraft was not just about raw power. It was a sophisticated machine, its resilient Inconel X alloy and innovative control systems specially designed to withstand the intense heat and stress of its high-speed missions. As one of the first reusable aircraft capable of reaching the outer limits of Earth's atmosphere, the X-15 provided invaluable data on hypersonic flight, re-entry, and high-altitude operations, paving the way for future space endeavors including the Space Shuttle. Piloted by some of the most skilled aviators in history, including Neil Armstrong and Pete Knight, the X-15 program was a testament to human ingenuity. The concept for the X-15 originated from an early 1950s study by Walter Dornberger, a German engineer instrumental in the V-2 rocket program who had been recruited by the United States after World War II. Dornberger came up with a proposal for a hypersonic research aircraft capable of reaching unprecedented speeds and altitudes, providing crucial data on aerodynamics, propulsion, and the effects of high-speed flight on structures and pilots. With Cold War tensions continuing to escalate, this idea was of great interest to the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, or NACA, the forerunner of NASA, who saw the need for a cutting-edge research platform to push the frontiers of aerospace innovation and inform the design of future spacecraft and high-speed aircraft, thus keeping the U.S. one step ahead of their Soviet rivals in the bitter race for increasingly more advanced technology. To bring this vision to reality, ANACIA issued requests for proposals in late 1954 and early 1955, inviting aerospace companies to submit designs for both the airframe and the rocket engine. With a reputation for creativity and experience with high-speed aircraft, North American Aviation was selected to build three X-15 airframes, while Reaction Motors, Inc. was tasked with developing the powerful XLR-99 liquid-fuel rocket engine, with both companies beginning work on their respective designs in 1956. North American's design for the X-15 incorporated several innovative features tailored to its mission of exploring hypersonic flight and the edge of space. Its fuselage was long, measuring roughly 50 feet in the standard version, and had a cylindrical shape with rear fairings to reduce drag and maintain structural integrity at high speeds and altitudes. The aircraft featured thick dorsal and ventral wedge fin stabilizers which were essential for maintaining aerodynamic stability and control during hypersonic flight. These stabilizers prevented unwanted yaw and pitch movements, ensuring that the aircraft remained controllable under extreme conditions. The aircraft featured a 13-foot-high thick wedge-shaped tail designed to ensure stable flight at hypersonic speeds, although this design created significant base drag at lower speeds comparable to the drag of an entire F-104 Starfighter. This wedge shape was chosen for its superior effectiveness in providing directional stability at hypersonic velocities. To achieve adequate stability, the vertical tail area needed to be 60% of the wing area. It was also equipped with extendable side panels on the tail to further enhance stability at hypersonic speeds. These panels increased the surface area of the tail, aiding in directional control and doubling as air brakes when necessary. What's more, the X-15 carried a sophisticated suite of instruments to gather data on flight dynamics, structural loads, aerodynamic heating, and other critical parameters. This data was crucial for understanding hypersonic flight and informing future aerospace developments. The fuselage's outer skin was made of Inconel X-750, a heat-resistant nickel alloy protecting the X-15 from the extreme temperatures generated during hypersonic flight while safeguarding critical structural components and maintaining durability under thermal and aerodynamic stress. This skin was part of the aircraft's thermal protection system, which also included strategically placed insulation and cooling systems to manage the extreme heat generated during re-entry from the upper atmosphere. 
The aircraft used a retractable landing gear system with a nose wheel carriage and two rear skids, which were lighter and simpler than traditional wheels. This design contributed to overall weight reduction and provided a reliable landing mechanism suitable for various surfaces. Before landing, the lower ventral fin had to be jettisoned to avoid damage. It had a parachute system in place to recover and reuse the fin. This innovative approach ensured safe landings while maintaining the aircraft's aerodynamic performance during flight. The X-15 was one of the first aircraft to use real-time telemetry, transmitting data back to ground control during flight. This capability allowed for immediate analysis and adjustments, further enhancing the safety and effectiveness of test missions. The X-15's cockpit included various controls and features such as a rocket engine throttle, a control for jettisoning the ventral tail fin, heated windows to prevent icing, and a forward headrest for high deceleration periods. The aircraft had an ejection seat designed for speeds up to Mach 4 and altitudes of 120,000 feet, though it was never used. Pilots wore pressure suits that could be pressurized with nitrogen gas, and above 35,000 feet, the cockpit was pressurized to 3.5 pounds per square inch with nitrogen gas, with oxygen fed separately for breathing. The MH-96 flight control system in the alternative setup allowed for a single joystick that could automatically blend aerodynamic and rocket controls, simplifying pilot input and ensuring effective control of the aircraft under varying conditions. Additionally, the X-15 was equipped with a reaction control system featuring small rocket thrusters on the nose and wings. These thrusters provided control in the thin atmosphere at the edge of space, where traditional aerodynamic control surfaces would be ineffective, allowing for precise maneuvering during the spacecraft-like portions of its flight. One of the other key design choices of the X-15 was the decision to carry the aircraft aloft and drop launch it from a B-52 mothership. This method was chosen to allow the X-15 to start its flight at a high altitude of about 8.5 miles and a speed of approximately 500 miles per hour, significantly reducing atmospheric drag and aerodynamic heating. This air launch system also enabled more efficient use of fuel and facilitated frequent and diverse testing scenarios, thus accelerating the pace of research and development. Meanwhile, the team at Reaction Motors was hard at work creating the XLR-99 engine, designed to provide an impressive thrust of 57,000 pounds of force, which would enable the X-15 to reach the high speeds and altitudes it aimed for. However, they first decided to test the X-15 with their earlier XLR-11, the engine that had famously powered the Bell X-1, the first aircraft to break the sound barrier in 1947. The X-15, specially configured for flexibility when it came to engines, was initially given a pair of these XLR-11S, which had been enhanced to give a total thrust of 16,000 pounds of force. While this was much lower than the thrust the XLR-99 was being built to deliver, it was still significantly higher than the 6,000 pounds of force that the Bell X-1's single XLR-11 had needed to enable it to fly at supersonic speeds. The early flights of the X-15 program were pivotal in testing and understanding the aircraft's capabilities. The program began at Edwards Air Force Base in California with an unpowered glide flight in the first aircraft, X-15-1, piloted by Scott Crossfield on June 8, 1959. This initial flight involved the X-15 being carried into the sky by its B-52 and released to glide back to the ground, allowing engineers to evaluate its handling without propulsion. On September 17, 1959, Crossfield continued to pioneer the program by piloting the first powered flight, flying the X-15-2 with the XLR-11 engine. Testing with the XLR-11 continued into the following year, but by summer 1960, the XLR-99 was ready to be installed in the X-15. On November 15th that year, Crossfield piloted the first flight using the powerful new engine, which dramatically enhanced the aircraft's performance. In 1961, the X-15 program achieved significant milestones in high-speed and high-altitude flight with several notable accomplishments. On March 7th, now with pilot Robert White at the controls, the X-15 reached an altitude of 107,800 feet, over 20 miles above ground, demonstrating the aircraft's capability to operate effectively in the thin upper atmosphere. 
On June 23rd, White further pushed the boundaries by achieving a speed of Mach 5.27 or 3,603 miles per hour, marking the first time a manned aircraft exceeded Mach 5. These flights provided critical data on aerodynamic heating, structural integrity, and control systems at extreme speeds and altitudes. Among the other pilots to fly the X-15 early on was the future first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong, who flew the aircraft seven times. One particularly notable incident occurred on April 20, 1962, when, while evaluating the MH-96 control system during his sixth flight in the X-15, Armstrong ascended beyond 207,000 feet. He maintained the aircraft's nose elevated during the descent to showcase the MH-96's capability to limit G-forces, causing the X-15 to rise again to approximately 140,000 feet. Traveling at Mach 3 and at an altitude of over 100,000 feet, Armstrong exceeded the landing strip, eventually veering 40 miles south of Edwards. Once at a lower altitude, he maneuvered back toward the landing zone and successfully completed the landing. This flight marked the longest in terms of duration and ground distance covered in the X-15 program. Another landmark occurred on July 17, 1962, when White piloted the X-15 even higher. On this occasion, he reached a dizzying altitude of 314,750 feet, almost 60 miles high. In other words, the edge of space. This impressive feat qualified him for astronaut wings, as well as offering valuable insights into the transition between atmospheric and spaceflight. The following year, pilot Joe Walker went higher still, flying over 328,000 feet or 62 miles above the Earth's surface, crossing the limit that the Fédération Aéronautique Internationale set as the official boundary with space. However, not every test went successfully. On November 9, 1962, pilot Jack McKay encountered an engine malfunction and made an emergency landing at Mud Lake, Nevada. During the landing, the gear gave way, causing the aircraft to overturn and end up inverted. Although McKay recuperated enough to resume flying, his injuries ultimately forced him into retirement. Meanwhile, the damaged X-15-2 was redesigned as X-15A-2. This version of the aircraft included several significant upgrades that enhanced its performance and capabilities. The fuselage was extended by 28 inches to accommodate additional fuel, and its overall length was increased by 2.4 feet, improving its aerodynamics. Auxiliary fuel tanks were added beneath the fuselage and wings, further increasing fuel capacity and allowing for longer flight durations and greater distances. A complete heat-resistant ablative coating was applied to protect the aircraft from the intense heat generated at hypersonic speeds. These modifications enabled the X-15A2 to achieve higher speeds and altitudes, extend mission durations, and provide valuable insights into thermal protection technologies. This variation was flown for the first time on June 25, 1964, but its finest hour would come a little over three years later, when on October 3, 1967, William J. Pete Knight piloted the X-15A2 to an unprecedented speed of Mach 6.72, or 4,520 miles per hour. This remarkable achievement not only demonstrated the X-15's extraordinary capabilities and pushed the boundaries of what was possible in aviation at the time, but it also set a speed record for a manned aircraft that has not been beaten to this day. A month later, however, tragedy struck. On November 15th, as Major Michael J. Adams performed the 191st X-15 flight in X-15-3, the third prototype, the aircraft went into a hypersonic spin during its descent, followed by intense oscillations due to growing aerodynamic pressures after re-entering the atmosphere. The flight control system of the aircraft maxed out the control surfaces as the acceleration escalated to 15 G0 or 492 feet per second, squared vertically and 8 G0 or 256 feet per second, squared laterally. The structure of the aircraft disintegrated at an altitude of 60,000 feet, dispersing debris over an area of 50 square miles and claiming Adam's life in the process. Adams would be posthumously awarded Air Force astronaut wings for his final flight, which had reached an altitude of 50.4 miles. In 1991, his name was added to the Astronaut Memorial at the John F. Kennedy Space Center in Florida, and in 2004, a monument was erected in his honor near the cockpit crash site in the Mojave Desert in California. 
Major Adams' accident would signal the beginning of the end of the X-15 program, as concerns were raised about the risks involved. Moreover, by now, the project had fulfilled its research goals of providing critical data on hypersonic flight and high-altitude conditions. With the X-15 now rapidly becoming obsolete in the face of technological advancements that surpassed its capabilities, attention and funding were redirected to the Apollo moon missions instead. While nine more flights were successfully completed during late 1967 and 1968, the 200th flight, scheduled for November 21st with Pete Knight at the controls, was delayed six times due to a slew of technical issues and unfavorable weather conditions, before eventually being canceled altogether. The X-15 program was officially brought to an end soon afterward. Today, X-15-1 can be found in the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. in the Milestones of Flight Gallery, though it is currently undergoing restoration work. Meanwhile, X-15-A2 is on display in the Research and Development Gallery of the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio, alongside other experimental X-planes such as the Bell X-1B and the Douglas X-3 Stiletto. Although the X-15 program lasted less than a decade, it left a significant legacy. The critical aerospace advancements it pioneered, including heat-resistant materials, lifting body aerodynamics, advanced control systems, and insights into human factors, directly informed the development of the space shuttle and other spacecraft technologies, while the project was also instrumental in establishing a framework for pilot safety and aircraft stability at altitudes and speeds previously unexplored. The impact of the X-15 is reflected in every subsequent U.S. manned space endeavor, demonstrating the enduring influence of its technological and scientific contributions.